Okay, so I hope you have seen the ano, nakikita na yung ano, yung presentation. Nakikita na ba? Anyone would like to react? Nakikita na yung slides? PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you for responding. So for our module 5, I think this is module 5 already, tama ba? So for our module Five, the focus of our discussion, it's about El Filipusterismo, no? This is the second novel of Rizal, no? So if Noli Metangere, uh, so somehow it's titled, it's a Latin, and it's taken from what we call from, uh, from the Bible, from the Gospel of John, uh, as, as commented by uh, Ambeto Campo, and then later on, Xiao Chua found out that this title was taken from the letter no, of what we call letter of uh, Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. No? <clears throat> okay, so to begin with, no, let's try to know uh, all about El Filibusterismo no? and what is all about this novel LPD. Okay? So we discover when did Rizal start writing its second novel and why he write this novel. And why the title is El Filibusterismo? Okay. So probably on March 29, 1891, Rizal wrote a letter to Ferdinand Dumitri and telling him that he finished writing his second novel, El Filibusterismo, no? On March 30, 1891, he proceeded by train, no, uh, in, in, went in Paris and stayed with his friend, no, kay Valentin Ventura, no. So that time, medyo, uh, result is, is what we call living in a frugal life, no, medyo wala siyang income, kaya ganon, nakikitara muna siya. On April 4, 1891, Rizal wrote a letter to Sebasa expressing his desire to practice ophthalmology in Hong Kong, no, to sustain his needs. So, parang napag-isipan na niya that he wanted to work, no? And on April 1891, no, uh, so from Paris, uh, living with Valentin Ventura, he went in Brussels, no, in Brussels. <clears throat> now, uh, of course, at that time, we are aware that Rizal was a member of the propagandists or what we call the propaganda movement, no? So, yung nakikita na which are the propagandists. So, at that time, you know, on May 1st, 1891, Rizal notified the propaganda authorities in Manila to cancel his monthly allowance, no? He wrote a letter to what we call Kay Diodato Arellano, wherein he's the one who managed the, what we call La Solidaridad, the patriotic newspaper, no? <clears throat> On August 7, 1891, uh, he wrote a letter to Marcelo H. Del Filar, and then Del Filar wrote to Rizal also, you know, begging for forgiveness for their sentiment and requesting him to resume writing for La Solidaridad, you no? Know? So what happened ba, no? So prior to that kasi, no, uh, that time, nagkaroon ng, they appointed, no, who will be the leader or what we call the responsable or the president of the La Solidaridad, so probably on the voting, nanalo si Rizal, no? Yung mga Rizalista, na ating nga sila, Rizalista and Artillerista. On the voting, so probably Rizal uh, got the, uh, won the, ano, the voting. Kaya lang, when they asked him to lead the propaganda movement or what we call the Solidaridad, he refused, no? So kaya ang nagano si, what we call Marcelo H. Del Pilar. Pero on the votation, siya yung nanalo. Kaya lang, parang tingin niya, uh, hindi mag maganda yung mangyayari if he will ano, assume the position, no? So that's why he declined the position and then Marcel H. Del Filar was the one who, ano, who <clears throat> was voted or became the leader of the responsable or what we call the La Solidaridad or became the president of the La Solidaridad. And then he replied, no? Uh, as to to the appeal or request of Marcelo X. Del Pilar, sabi niya, uh, is his writing down in the Solidaridad because of several reasons or causes. One, it's 
he need time to work on his book, El Filipistismo, and then he wish to work to earn a living. And third, uh, this is also to give way, you know, to give way for the sake of unity of the Filipinos. Kasi uh, pag siya daw yung nagano, baka hindi magiging united yung membro ng La Solidaridad or the Filipino members, no? And to continue, in Brussels, Belgium, uh, the time, no? So, parang nagbabakward tayo, no? Rizal revised his novel, and then the first 20 chapters were ready for printing. May 30, 1891, he wrote to Osebasa, it's friend from Hong Kong, no? Expressed his financial need for the printing of his second novel, El Filibus Tirismo. So, as you can see, parang naulit, no? Yung sa novelang no ni Tanjire, wala rin siyang pera to print the novel. So, it also happened, no? Ganito rin yung nangyari sa El Filibusterismo. On June 13, 1891, Rizal again informed its friend, Jose Maria Basa, about its instant to print the El Filibusterismo. Sabi niya, three chapters only corrected, no? So, in-edit na yan, niya, no? Okay? And of course, from then, of course, El Filibusterismo was published in Chant Belgium, no? On October 1887, so backward again, no? So, palikan natin. So, Rizal started writing the novel in Calamba, Laguna. So, in sinimulan niyang gawin o isulat yung kanyang novela noong first oncoming niya, no? Noong umuwi siya, and that was in the month of October 1887, no? While he was in, staying in Laguna and doing its clinical work, no? Di ba, naging ano siya, tinawag siyang Dr. Aleman that time, no? Kasi parang is a German, no? Alemania, no? And then in 1888, Rizal made some changes in the flat and corrected some chapters while he was traveling in London. This is also the time wherein Rizal writing in, or annotate the work of Dr. Antonio de Morga, no, yung Successos de las Filipinas. In 1890, Rizal wrote more chapters in Paris and Brussels. And then it was in March 29, 1891, wherein Rizal finished writing the manuscript in the Iris, France, no? And coincide with that, no, that was the time also that he is proposing to marry Nelly Boasted, kaya lang the parent of Boasted does not like Rizal, no. Continue. So July 5, 1891, from Brussels, Belgium, Rizal went in Chant, no. And Rizal decided to move in Chant for two reasons. Of course, the cost of printing in Chant was cheaper than in Brussels, and to escape from the enticing attraction of uh, Fetid Susan, no? Parang ginugulo siya kasi ni, ano, ni Susan, no? And then, of course, uh, kasama ni Rizal na nag-migrate, no? Or something lumipat sa gent ay si Jose Alejandrino and Edilberto Evangelista. If you remember Jose Alejandrino, no? In our previous discussion, so sa kanya, tina, uh, Rizal told him that he regretted to kill Elias, no? Kasi, ka, ano niya, ka, ka roommate niya palagi, no? Sing kasama niya. And that time, uh, Jose Alendrino is pursuing a course in engineering. <coughs> okay, to continue. So the the work or the second novel of Rizal was printed in Chet Belgium, no? So where in Rizal found a cheaper printer, uh, yun nga, yung F. Mayer Van Lufre, 66 Beandering Street, wherein they print the, its novel for installment basis, you know? So at first, para may pambayad siya, what did Rizal do? It found, no, is jewel for partial payment of the printing. Kaya lang, later on, na-stop, no? Yung nga, noong August 6, 1891, the printing of the novel was suspended because the need the needed fans were insufficient. So parang na-pending na siya, no? Hindi mo na siya ipinprint. So what happened next, no? Now, that time, of course, to continue the printing, may naipon ng konting pera si Rizal where he received the amount of 200 pesos to Rodrigo Sargas for the copies of success, Morgan's successes, no? And then kay Basa, he also received a copy, no, for financial assistance, but this were not enough to print its novel. And it was Valentin Ventura, his friend from Paris, no, where he funded the necessary cost of printing of El Filibusterismo. So the one who financed, no, or somehow, uh, <clears throat> nag, nag, 
nagpahiram ng pera kay Rizal o nagbigay ng pera kay Rizal para ma-print yung El Philip Streets mo, it's Valentin Ventura. No? And Valentin Ventura is a kapampangan, a rich kapampangan from Bacolor. No? And pinsan siya ng founder ng uh, Dabsu o yung Don Honorio Ventura. Pinsan siya ni Don Honorio Ventura. No? I clarify that one of my... Ano, So, and I was able to clarify na pinsan nga siya ni, ano. And, of course, FYI lang, kasi yung edad ng Dabsu, si Rizal, no? It was founded in 1861, and Rizal was born also in 1861. So, to continue, so like what happened, no? If Noli was funded by Maximo Viola from, from Bulacan, El Pili was funded by Valentin Ventura, no? So, parang... Kung titignan natin si Rizal as ito yung one of my observation, no? He's a person who's happy-go-lucky, no? Parang kung may pera siya, gagastasin yung ganito. Parang typical Filipino, no? Hindi siya nang-iipon or hindi siya nagtatabi, no? He never budget for any, ano, circumstances na mangyayari. Okay, to continue. September 18, 1891, the novel came of the press like the novel Noli Metangere. No? So there are, ano nga, nagtatanong kung ano ba yung mas maganda, yung Noli ba o yung LPD. No? So depende na yan kung sino yung read. Depende sa reader na yan. No? And of course, results in Capis de Basa and Sixty Lopez in Hong Kong. No? So para ma-distribute siya. And the, of course, Rizal donated the original manuscript to Valentin Ventura. No? Like, like in Noli, binigay niya kay Maximo Viola. And of course, the first copies of the novel was given to Blumenrit, Mariano Pons, uh, Graciano uh, Lopez Haina, Pardo de Tavera, si Dr. Antonio de Pardo de Vera, Luna, and these are the complementary copies. So, yan ang mga, so yung nakikita yung mga picture na yan, no? si Sixto Lopez, yan, no? <clears throat> and then, of course, si, uh, si Jose Baza, Graciano Lopez Haina, si Tavera, and then si Blumenrit, of course, si Luna, no? Okay, continue. So when it came up the press, no, naging popular din yung novel niya, second novel, in La, particular in Barcelona and Madrid, in La Publicidad, a newspaper from Madrid, eulogized the novel of uh, novel's uh, original style in relation to Alexander Dume, no, work. Parang kung ano yung kanyang work na LPD, kung pa paano pinraise or recognize yung work ni Alexander Dume, the Count of Monte Cristo, ganun din yung ginawa sa El Filibusterismo. No? And there are also comparison. No? They thought there are some comparison that Rizal somehow bases work on the work of Alexander Dume, yung The Count of Monte Cristo. Somehow may similarities kasi si Edmond Dantes as the main character in The Count of Monte Cristo, parang similar sa kay Simon, no? wherein they, are, they go, went back for revenge. No? And in a newspaper in Madrid, no, a liberal newspaper in Madrid, yung El Nuevo Reimen, serialized the novel of Rizal on the issues of October from uh, October 1891. Ibig sabihin, from October 1, nag-issue yung, ano, yung El Nuevo Reimen on the part of the newspaper, nakaprint doon yung by chapter, no, ano ba, chapter 1 ng, uh, no, ng El Fili, nandun siya. So it became popular, no? Okay, to continue. Now, uh, so a while ago, he, the copies sent to Jose Basa in 60 Lopez in Hong Kong. So what happened to those copies? No? So in Hong Kong, the novel first copies were confiscated and lost. So nawala sila. No? And then in Gent, kung saan na-print the novel, the few available copies of the novel were sold at a very high price. So mas mahal pa siya sa Noli Metangere kasi yung Noli, it's only 200 pesetas, that is of 250 pesos. And ito umabot siya ng 400 pesetas or equivalent to 80 pesos. And that is expensive, no? Bakit tumaas siya o naging mahal? Kasi nga, yun nga, may nangyari, no? Yung, some copies are confiscated. Ibig sabihin, naging limited edition siya, no? Kaya naging expensive siya. And probably, the original cover, yung nakikita yung sa slide, yan ang original cover niya, no? Because its second novel, it dedicated this to the three Filipino priests, the Gomborsa, no? Kay Padre Jose Gomez, kay Padre, Jose, ay, Padre Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, na nasinto sa Mora. So, 
So probably the original manuscript of El Filibusterismo results on handwriting was preserved in the Filipiniana Division of the Bureau of Public Libraries. So hanggang ngayon, no, uh, one time may documentary si, you know, si Cara David na pinakita how they preserved the two novel of Rizal, wherein the the government of Germany did uh, donated 2 million pesos no, para ma-preserve lang mga to. Okay? So the Philippine government bought the novel to Valentin Ventura amount in 10,000 pesos. So if Valentin Ventura, kumita na siya no, kasi uh, kung nagastos lang siya ng let's say 500 pesos, then doble-doble yung kinita niya no, because he was able to sold it for 10,000 pesos. Uh, like in the novel Noli, meron ding dinilit, no? Ito dinilit yung kanyang forwards and warning, no? Okay, to continue. Okay. So, El Pilibusterismo, no? So, probably if you translate this one in English translation, meron na siya, no? It can be uh, Pilibuster, no? So, that is the literal translation. Pilibuster is some is a person, referring to a person who is against the government or doing a, a subversive ano, ideas or something uh, action, no? Kaya filibusterismo or mapangahas, something like that, no? Now, in, so in the first part of the novel, I quoted this one from uh, its ori the original no, Spanish version. It's, it is written, sabi niya, De los Presbyteros, Don Mariano Gomez, 85 años. Dono Se Burgos, uh, 30 años, y Dona Cinto Zamora, 35 años, ejecutados en el patibulo de Bagumbayan el 28 de febrero de uh, 1862. No, I've taken this one from my ano, from the Apple books, no? Okay, so it has been translated, no, by the in 1912. So it's uh, the translation to the memory of the priest, Don Mariano Gomez, 85 years old, Don Burgos, 30 years old, and Don Asinto Zamora, 35 years old, no? Executed in Bagumbayan Field on the 28th of February, 1872, no? So as you can see in translation, hindi na siya ganun ka, ka accurate, no? Kasi, de los previsteros, to the memory of the priest, it's different. Kasi kung... kung uh, dapat el memoria no el memoria de padres or 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 father no pero presbyteros in this translation is uh, the pre, uh, uh, presbyterates or presbyters no okay. so as you can see yung uh, the hearts of translation no to continue now in the introduction nakasulat no so this is the Spanish version La religión al negarse a de grados a puesto e duda el crimen que se os ha imputado, el gobierno arrodará vuestra cosa de ministerio y sombras, no se creer en algún error, ¿no? Comentido en monumentos pastales, y Filipinas enterá al venerar vuestra memoria y llamaros materes, no reconoce de ninguna manera vuestra culpabilidad. Okay. So this one is has been translated in English by David Shearer, no, in 1912. So it's written like this. Sabi ni David, sa kanyang translation, so as you can see, iba na naman. Kung nakita mo yung religion, el religion, dito linagay ni David Shearer, it's church. No, pwedeng religion dapat, no. Sabi ni David, sa translation of David Shearer, the church, by refusing to degrade you, <clears throat> as placed in doubt the crime that has been imputed to you, the government, by surrounding your trials with misery and shadows, causes the belief that there was some error committed in the fatal moments. And all the Philippines, by worshipping your memory and calling your martyrs, in no sense recognizes your culpability. Insofar, therefore, as your complicity in the Kabiti mutiny is not clear proof, as you may or may not have been patriot, as you may or may not have cherished sentiments for justice and for liberty, I have the right to dedicate my work to you as a victim of the evil which I undertake to combat. No? So, dito pala, may pahayag na siya. No? And why we await expectantly and Spain someday to restore your good name and cease to be inservable for your death, let this page serve as the third writ of dry leaves over <clears throat> unknown tombs and let it be understood that 
everyone with a clear protective memory stains hands in your blood. Okay, parang sa introduction, kinaklarify ni Rizal na yun na, no? parang, of course, most those who didn't know them or those who didn't know that the Gombrusa, so somehow they see them as something that uh, they are literally or they are the one who uh, led the Kabite mutiny in 18, in, on, eight, on January 1872, diba? Pero yun na, ni na in the in the in the first ano niya, parang they are victims no okay now let's talk about the the different chapters no so the original El Filibusterismo was published in 1891 by Rizal so it consists of what we call 34 chapters i think no now as you can see in the translation of Devisure so somehow uh, accurate naman no like Chapter 1, sobre cubierta on the upper decks, bajo cubierta on the lower de deck, no? Pero yun nga. Then, yun yan, the last agents. And then, some of the translation also are somehow similar, particularly yung mga name, ayan. O, oh, ano nagbago sa mga name? And then, Venice Pasqua, or Christmas, okay? And then, Pilatos, and then, the Pilates, then, request sa Emiseria. Emiseria, wealth and want. Pero dito, no? Yung request sa Emiseria, pwede kasi dito, it's Wealth and misery. And then Los Banos. Okay, see. And then si Placido Petinente, the Placido. That is Placido. La Plaza de Pisica. So so as you can observe, no, yung translation as somehow accurate. Siya. Okay. Dito Risas Lianto, smile and tears, but this one can so uh in lit uh Risas Lientos in the are uh, one of the article of Rizal, no, published in the Solidaridad, in its title is Lianto Irisas, no, balitan naman, tears and laughters, no. And then the Pasquinadas, wala siyang translation, but he wrote it as Pasquinadas, no. Yeah, no? And then, very ano to, yung chapter uh, 28, kung napansin niyo, no, chapter 28, the title, it's like a kapampangan, no, it's tatakot. No, parang why? Why is the title of this chapter is that ako? When I read this chapter, no, parang I want to connect kung may kaugnayan ba yung title niya sa sa nilalaman, no, or the content of this chapter na tatakot. Somehow, walang masyado, no. And it to, the main character here, we have Simon, Ben Saib, uh, Ibanez, no, and then, uh, and then, so the yung mga incident na nangyayari <clears throat> and then of course they also talk about the the what we call the Pasquinadas and then of course but to relate it with the title Tatakot no it's a, a something that is pass uh, uh it puzzles us why it's the title it's Tatakot no and even in original Spanish version na it's Tatakot and maybe they be sure could not find any translation with tatakot, no? And if we are correct na this is kapampangan, so probably maybe Rizal would like to, ano, uh, as a gratitude for Valentin Ventura, no? He adapted the language of Valentin Ventura. So go, maybe, ah, uh, this is just my opinion, no? Don't take it as a uh, based on research. Maybe this, uh, maybe Valentin Ventura always telling Rizal that he's tatakot, something like that. And Rizal, maybe, I like to hear that word. That's why he, he put this title in chapter 28 as Tatahot, no? And then, the Ultima Palabras, and then Hoodie, no? And then the Alto and, and so on. This one, no? El Alto Empleado, the High Official. Parang, it's not lit literal yung translation niya, no? And then, the Ultima Razon. And of course, hindi natin translate on the Ultima Razon. It's inadapt niya. Pero Razon is reason, no? Having the ultimate reason, and then the las bodas, the wedding, and so on. So as you can see, it consists of a while ago. Ah, sorry, thirty chapter pala, no? It consists of thirty chapter, but for Devisure, it consists of thirty nine chapters. So almost half of no limitanchere, no, yung LPD. And of course, later we will try to, ano. And this is Devisure, yani naturally Devisure, no. And no translator, no. At worst, it's given a new title, "The Reign of the Creed," no. And the sure also translated the novel of Noli Metangere, "The Social Cancer," no. If you remember in our previous discussion, no. Okay. 
So to continue, so probably we cannot discuss each chapter. Imagine 38 chapters. Uh, before, normally it's 64 chapters, yung revised version niya, no? but the original is 65 chapters. Now, uh, if we will discuss them by chapter, so probably, hindi natin makakaya, no? hindi natin matatapos talaga. So, idealistic, very idealistic that we will come up with the different chapters. No? Now, let's try to compare the Noli in Tangere and El Filipos de Rismo. So, historian, they classified Noli in Matangere as somehow very light, no? yung a book of feelings. Tama, hindi siya masyadong ganun ka, ano, ka intense. No? And it's something that is romantic kasi somehow on the part of the Noli Matangere, it talks about the love life of Kusostum uh, Ibarra in Magsalin and of course kay Maria Clara de los Santos. No? And of course, uh, the edited or what we call the uh, final copy of Noli uh, end up with 64 chapters, no? And wherein you can identify more than 39 characters. While El Filibusterismo, a uh, historian classified it as a book of thought, you know, something it's very political and more intense, no? Masyad siyang ano, aggressive. And it consists of 38 chapters and there are more than 30 characters being identified. Similarities, so probably they both depict the actual condition of the Filipinos and the Philippines. Sabi nga ng isang ano, uh, writer, nag-comment that the novel Noli Metangere and El Filibusterismo, they are fictionalized history. Parang sinabi ni Chua, no? They are both, they are fictionalized history, no? They are both instrumental in awakening the spirit of Filipino nationalism. So probably, no, like particularly Andres Bonifacio, they are both responsible in fading the ground for the Philippine revolution and they were used against Rizal, no? So they are part of the 15 exhibits na ginamit para idiin si Rizal, no? Okay? So those are some of the similarities, no? Continue and differences. Okay. <clears throat> so before we start with the character, may I ask first if you have any concern or questions? Anyone in the group? Any clarification or questions? Okay, so for now, wala mo na. Okay, thank you for responding. Okay, now, so let's try to understand the novel. Instead of going to the different chapters, we will do what we, uh, character analysis or try to understand who are, the, uh, who are the characters involved in the novel El Filibusterismo. Of course, uh, kilala niya, no? So, ito yung animated version ni what we call si Ibarra na naging Simon, no? So, Ibarra, no, or what we call it is guys as Simon, no, or this guy as jeweler in return in San Diego to avenge and free its people from the corrupt Spanish official and friars. So, yun ang objective ni Simon, no? Probably yung sin na to, katulad yan ng, ano, ng The Count of Monte Cristo, Kasi si, di ba si Ibarra, in the last chapter, nawala siya for quite some times. No? Uh, parang nagtago, no? And then, bigla-bigla bumalik siya. Now, in the Count of Monte Cristo, ganun din yung nangyari. No? Si Edmund Dantes, he was betrayed by its friend, no? Dahil sa girl lang yan, kay Mercedes, no? So, nakulong siya, he was betrayed by its friend, siyang pinagbintangan na pumatay, and then nakulong inside the uh, Count of Monte Cristo, that is the place where he was ano, incarcerated, namit niya isang pari, no? And the priest na namit niya, tinruha niya, no? Parang, of course, don't be confused, ha? kinukwento ko yung Count of Monte Cristo. And then, nung, yung priest na yun, meron siyang parang treasure na mapa. And, of course, to end up, ganun, nung nakalaya si, or nakataka si Edmund Dante, yung ginawa niya, he tried to find the jewel, no? Or the treasure, and then, to revenge or to avenge uh, uh, to his, what we call to its friend na, na inaccuse niya, no? na pinagbintaan niya or betrayed him. So, Simon, parang ganun, of course, it's not about betrayal, pero babalik siya to, pro, uh, to avenge no? and free its people kasi yung ginawa sa kanya. No? Diba, he was accused or nakulong siya dahil kay Maria Clara no? kasi yung mga letter niya, <clears throat> binigay, niya kay, ano, uh, binigay niya kay Don Custodio, no? So probably here, 
from the title itself, yung character ni Simon was considered as a video booster and protagonist of the novel, wherein he was a friend of Basilio and Isagani, no? So, bata pa si Basilio nung nasa ano, di ba, no, limitansire, but now, is a this 10-year-old uh, boy whose mother died uh, <clears throat> si, and brother, si Crispin, now, he is now practicing a doctor, no? Nag-aaral siya ng doctor. So, Basilio, the 10-year-old in Noli Metangere, is now aspiring a doctor, no? And he was, a no, no, raised by Capitan Chago. But before that, no, ang nakapulot sa kanya ay yung tulisanes, no? Si Cabezang Tales, no? Uh, no? Simon's uh, connivance is not an exclusive device in the wedding of Paulita Gomez and Juanita Pelaez, no? So, nung magbalik siya, gumawa siya ng ano, di ba, yung lampara, as you remember, what we call the, the lampara, where it can be used as a bomb, no, ginawa yung momba. Kasama niya doon, si Basilio at saka si Isagani. But, during the wedding of Paulita Gomez and Juanita Pelaez, no, <clears throat> si Isagani, as a poet <clears throat> and Basilio's friend, uh, portrayed uh portrayed as emotional and reactive no kasi former girlfriend niya si Paulita Gomez kundi siya na kulong baka sila nagkatuluyan kasi si Isagani na kulong siya no and then later nakatakas and then isabotage si Simon's explosive device kasama sa sa sumabog kaya hindi na pasaw ang kaya yung <clears throat> yun hindi na tuloy no the attempt that to destroy all the Spanish officials during the wedding of Paulita Gomez and Juanita Pelaez was somehow no sabotage by is the Gani. <clears throat> so, yun si Paulita Gomez, no? Paulita Gomez was the niece of Doña Victorina, no? And sweetheart of Isagani, supposedly dapat sila magkakatuloy, ang kailangan ako nung si Isagani, nahuli siya during the, ano, actually, that is in the chapter of Tatakot, doon siya nahuli, no? Following Isagani's imprisonment, Paulita broke the relationship of and married Juanito Pelaez instead, no? Of course, Juanito Pelaez was said to have been born an Indio, with mestizo blood. The identity and whereabouts of his mother are known and she is not mentioned, no? parang, si, parang si Ibarra. No? It is suggested that the Spanish blood was passed down from his father kay Don Timoteo Pelaez. To continue, so some of the character we have Don Custodio, yung na-mention ko dati, Don Custodio de Salazar is Sanchez de, de Monterondo, is a famous journalist who was asked by the student about his decision for the Academia de Castellano. In reality, he's a quite an ordinary fellow, you know, ordinary fellow, <clears throat> sorry, uh, who married a rich human in order to be a member of the Manila High Society. So, medyo may pagka social climber din siya, no? And then we have Cabezan Tales, or Telesporo Juan de Dios, a former Cabeza de Barangay of Sagpang, uh, is the one who feared the bandit, no? So, yung parang uh, pinagmulan ng, ni Cabezantales, Cabezantano, no? And then, we had si Father Florentino. He was a Siganis dead father. A uh, secular priest was engaged to be married but chosen to be a priest for being pressured by his mother, no? And then, <clears throat> and then we have Makaraig, one of Isagani's classmates at the University of San Tomas, a student, and served as the leader of the student yearning to build the Academia de Castellano. So, supporters sina ni, ano, ni Simon, no? As regard to the building of the Academia de Castellano or the Spanish Academy. And then we have Bensai, no? As I mentioned, no? Kanina, si Bensai sa tatakot na din din siya, no? So the name of Abraham Ibanez, a journalist who believe he is the only one thinking in the Philippines, no, the anagram of Ibanez. Parang pinapakita niya very concerned siya, pero hindi naman talaga ganun, no? And then Huli, or Diana de Dios, so girlfriend siya ni Basilio, and then anak siya ni Cabezang Tales, worked as a maid kay Hermana Penchang, and then later on committed suicide because of Father Camora, no? If si Father Camora attempted to rape, no, si Judy or si Juliana de Dios. Na prior to that, nakulong siya, no? Si Basilio parang nag-iipon siya to, ano, 
Okay, and then later on, she committed suicide. And then Padre Irene naman, si Father Irene, it was Kapitan Chago's spiritual advisor, no? And of course, he's the one who opposed about the Academia de Castellano. And he's the only witness to Kapitan Chago's death. And they do believe that he forged the last will and testament of Kapitan Chago. And of course, this, in the story, kaya namatay si Kapitan Chago kasi nga, parang si Padre Irene, no? Pinapaano na ng opium. Instead na gamutin niya, na-worsen yung condition ni uh, Kapitan Chago because he wanted him to die talaga, no? Yung sama ng pari nito, no? Si Padre Irene, no? And then we have Hermana Penchang, in, uh, uh, asagpang rich po sa color, a gambler, considered herself as an ally of the prior, somehow considered mother figure of Hudi. No? Siya yung tumutulong kina uh, Kabesantades, and then siya rin ang nag ano, kay Hudi. No? And then we have Kiroga, no? a Chinese businessman who dream of being a consul for its country in the Philippines. He uh, is the one who hid Simon's weapon inside his house, no? si Kiroga, no? Kaibigan din niya si Simon. And then si Don Timoteo Pelaez, Simon's business partner, na father naman ni Juanito Pelaez. And we have Tandang Selo, the father of Cabez Tales. Okay, so correction, no? Why the guy mentioned Tales, no? Uh, so the one who raised uh, the sick and young boy Basilio was Tandang, uh, Tandang Selo bago siya nabigay kay Kapitan Chago. He died in an encounter on the mountain with his son, Cabezang Tales, no? And then si Padre Hernandez, or Father Hernandez, the priest friend of Isagani, wherein he promised to Isagani that he and the other priest will give in to the student demands, yung, uh, what we call yung Academia de Castellano, no? And then we have Hermana Bali, of course, the mortal enemy ni, ano yan, no? ni Hermana Penchang, kung sa Noli merong Doña Victorina, Doña Consolacion, no? Dito merong Hermana Bali and then we have Hermana Penchang, no? Another governor in Tiani, she became Uli's mother figure, uh, correction, mother figure and counselor, helped to release Cabezantales from hand of bandits. You know? So it was Hermana Bali. And then Sandopal, the vice leader of the Mkorai Gang, Spanish classmate of Zigani, he coerces his fellow classmate to lead alongside with the opening of the Spanish language academy, no? Si Sandopal. And then we have Father Mignon, the physics teacher of the University of Santo Tomas. He always became vindictive with Placido Pertiniente and always taught him during the class. Siya yung nagano, no? Parang dito, it's parang the result tell, tell story when you study in UST, no? Parang ganun siya. Pero yun nga, merong character na tinatawag na si Placido Pertiniente na inaapi ni Father Mignon, no? Or because he's an Indio. And then we have Pasta, one of the great lawyers of the mid-Hispanic Manila, opposed the student demand for a Spanish language academy. No, si Pasta, ayaw niya, no? And then we have Leeds, or Leeds, an American who holds stage play, staring at uh, the cup fated heads, is a good friend with Simon. Siya rin yung parang ano, kumukuha ng information, nagbibigyan ng information kay Simon, no? And then si Tano naman, uh, Kabesong Tales' elder son, after his uh, older sister, Lucia, died in childhood, he's currently one of the Guardia Civil, no? So he was exiled in Caroline Island, then he returned, uh, changing his name into Carolino, no? And then he became a Guardia Civil. And then we have Pepe, he was Don Cristina's supposed girlfriend, a dancer. She's always agitated of her boyfriend, Lance, and she seems to be a close friend of Makarai. And then we have Pexon, no? Basilius classmates who had no idea on the app on, on happenings occurring around him or or about the situation, no? He suggested uh, that they uh, held the max celebration at the Pansiteria, no? And then we have Fernando de Sibaila, a Dominican friar introduced in Noli Mitangere, now a vice rector of the University of Santo Tomas, no? Nagano siya. And then si Father Fernando Salve naman, Bernardo Salve, former Paris Prince of San Diego, now Director and Chaplain of Santa Clara Convent, no? wherein nandun din si Maria Clara. No? <clears throat> and then we have Don Capitan Chago, or now it's a former Capitan Chago. It was Maria Clara's stepfather and foster father of, of Basilio. No? So yung sabi nga, it so disingrat uh, disintegrates gradually because of the opium he was forced to smoke given by Padre Irene, no? 
And then, of course, Maria Clara, she was once a girlfriend of Rosos to Mibara, but then later on, he chose to become a nun, no? Uh, although Father Damaso opposed that time, no? Kaya nang uh, inanayot nila repen niya, kasi sabi niya kung hindi sa papayagan, magpapakamatay siya. And that is in the Noli Mitangere, no? Uh, then she eventually died as a witness, as witness by Basilio <coughs> during the visit of Santa Clara, no? This propelled Simon to expedite its plan for revolution. So, bali, yun, no? Yung revenge, no? Parang one of the reasons bakit na gano'n si Simon, yung nga yung pagkamatay ni Maria Clara. <clears throat> of course, uh, in the Noli, no, there are both, there are characters wherein kasi sequence, no, continuation yung LPD ng Noli. So there are characters who have been found also in the novel El Filibus de Ismo. Si Juan Cristos ng Mubara bilang Simon, di ba? And then si Basilio, the 10 years old now, becoming a doctor. And then si Kapitan Thiago de los Santos, na later on namatay din siya. So from a being a rich and famous and being Kapitan, now he's an old man uh, suffered from diseases. No? And then si Doña Victorina de los uh, Reyes de Espadaña, <coughs> or Doña Victorina, of course, on the first chapters, nandun siya sa La Cubierta, no? <coughs> o oh, Sobre Cubierta. And then si Don Tiborso, nandun din siya. And sorry, then we have the Father Hernando de Sibaila, no? And Padre Silva, nandun din siya. And of course, Maria Clara. So there are many characters found in the novel Noli Metangere, wherein they are also found in El Filibusterismo. Some of the characters in El Filibusterismo also portray the real life, no? Or real person, like Simon, alter ego of Jose Rizal. And then si Padre Florentino daw, it was Father Florencio Lopez, friend ni Rizal, priest friend ni Rizal, no? At sa kanya rin inattribute yung sa ating mga kabata, si daw nagsulat doon. And then we have si Gani, si Vicente Ulistri daw, friend ay uh, Batanggay nyo, no? In Madrid. And then si Paulita Gomez was si you know, Rivera. So before I end, no? So in the last chapter, no? When Simon had his confession, no? Kay, uh, <clears throat> kay Padre Martin, no? And then... Meron siyang, uh, si Padre Mar, uh, somehow he mentioned this word, no? parang sinabi niya in Spanish, uh, Yo no quiero decir que nuestra libertad se, con se conquiste a filho de espada, espada. La espada entra por muy poco ya en los destinos modernos, pero si la, la hemos de conquistar, mereciéndola, elevando la razón y la dignidad, the individual, Amado lo visto, lo bueno, lo grande, hasta morir por él. En cuando en pueblo llega a esa altura, Dios suministra el, el arma. Y caen los induros, caen los tiranos como castillo de naipes, y brilla libertad con la primera aurora. No? So, from the epoch, no? So, so in the translation of the picture, sabi niya, in that part, I don't mean to say that your liberty will be secured at a sword's point. For the sword play but little part in modern affairs, but but that we must secure it by making our worthy of it, by exalting the intelligence and the dignity of the individual, by loving justice, right, and greatness, even to the extent of dying for them. And when the people reaches the height, God will provide a weapon. The idols shatter, the tyranny will crumble, like house of the cards, and liberty will shine out like in the first dawn. So that's the end of our discussion for a note. Okay. Okay, any question or search? Answer. Medyo may nag-ano lang, nag-open, nag <laughs> may nag-create ng noise, no? Okay, I think it's too early, no, for us, no? Pero, of course, hindi naman tayo required na, ano, basta may natapos natin yung, ano, okay lang, no? And so, any clarification, we can use uh, the remaining time, no? For clarification or for any, ano, concern, no? <clears throat> 